absolutely incredible. Welcome everyone. Today I am very excited to announce that in this box right here, I have got myself the PlayStation 5 early. I'm going to be opening it up and unboxing it with you guys. Taking a look at everything that you get within the PlayStation 5 box. Taking a close look at the console, the controller. I am so excited. If you're excited to get an early look at the PlayStation 5, show your support, smash that thumbs up button. Let's see how much love we can get on this video and stay tuned for more PlayStation 5 and hopefully Xbox Series X videos as well. But let's not wait any longer. Let's Let's get this box open. Oh my god. Ooh, look at this. I want to start this video off by saying a huge thank you to Sony and PlayStation here in the UK for allowing me to be one of the very first people in the world to get hands on with this console. I've been making gaming videos here on YouTube for over 11 years. To get stuff like this is still absolutely incredible and I'm so appreciative of it. Aside from unboxing it and taking a look at the new PlayStation 5, the real big things that I'm interested in and I'm sure you're interested in as well is comparisons between the size of the console against the current generation of consoles and also a closer look at the controller to see how that compares against the previous gen PlayStation 4 controller and other controllers that are out there as well. We've got so much to take a look at, I cannot wait. First off, let's take a close look at the box itself. We get a first look at the console, the controller, obviously the PlayStation 5 logo, and in the top right, 8K gaming. That's 8K resolution. The ability to have 4K resolution with 120 FPS alongside that and HDR really making a big statement as to the graphical power of this console for the next generation. On the back here, PlayStation are making it very obvious that yes, the PlayStation 5 can also be laid horizontally, be laid flat as well, which is something we'll be doing in this video. Of course, a look at the controller, fast speed, breathtaking immersion and stunning games. In the top right hand corner, 800 125 gigabytes of space on the console itself. If anyone's noticed the rip on the front of the box, I don't know why that's there. I think it may have just been slightly damaged when it was packaged up. Hopefully the PlayStation's still inside it. Let's see. As you can tell, this is not an unboxing channel. I mainly just sit here playing games, but I'm trying my best. First up, we've got the power cable. Look at this. That is all you need to power your PlayStation 5. It is tiny. This, I'm so excited for, is the controller. We'll take a look at it in a second. We've got a few manuals, which normally, can't lie, wouldn't read. But the quick start guide actually does look quite useful. And the last thing I want to do is be breaking my new PlayStation. Darcy, what are you doing? You're not part of this unboxing. Also included within the box, HDMI cable. Very important for reaching all of the high resolutions and refresh rates with the latest HDMI technology. USB-C cable, which would be the connection type to link your console to the controller. Ah, the stand. This will allow us to go horizontal or vertical. This is it. If you haven't hit like already, smash that like button. Oh my gosh. It's a big boy. Ladies and gentlemen, the PlayStation 5. Not gonna lie, this thing is big. But in my opinion, it looks absolutely incredible. It looks like a next gen console. I wanna know your thoughts on just how the console looks. Do you like the design of the PlayStation? Leave your thoughts down below. On the front side of a console, you can see the USB port and the USB-C port below that. There's also an eject button because this is the disc version of the PlayStation 5. Let's not forget there is the discless version as well for all of you just wanna download your games onto the console and play that way. A nice power button at the bottom as well. And of course, a slot for your discs to go in to play the games. On the back, we'll find ourselves two more USB ports, Ethernet port, HDMI, and of course the power port at the bottom. Can't see anything too important at the bottom, but something to note, and I've seen this on a few videos, and actually in person, unless you're looking closely, you can miss it, but the inside white layer of the console has lots of PlayStation symbols, so that's the squares, circles, X's and triangles, to make up a nice textured feel on the inside of the console. I gotta admit, it looks so cool. I'm going to put it to the side for a moment before we compare it with all the other consoles for sizes and take a close look now at the controller. I'm very excited for this. I haven't got hands on with a PS5 controller yet and as a controller gamer myself, this is so important as to what it feels like and what it looks like for the next generation of PlayStation gamers. Here we go. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> it, feel, it feels good. It's light. It's really light. One of the first things a lot of people were saying when the controller was revealed is how big it looked. Some people liked that, some people didn't. And we're going to compare physically in person that in a second to take a real look at how big or small it is compared to everything else. Let's take a closer look at everything we've got here. The directional pad, the X, square and triangle and circle buttons, they look so nice. I love that kind of see-through look to them. I think it looks really cool. We've got the return of the touchpad here with the LED strip actually running around the touchpad rather than on the back of the controller. I think it's cool. You can actually see it then often the light on the back of the PS4 controller. You couldn't see half the time because it wasn't looking at you. Oh, um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to show you that light being turned on, but that's what it looks like with the blue LED. And I believe that LED can change to a lot of colors. The PlayStation symbol on the front rather than being the circle is just the outline of the PlayStation logo. A microphone in there as well and a port for other connectivity options as well. At the back of the controller, I thought maybe PlayStation would add in bumpers on the back. As somebody who has used scuff gaming controllers with additional bumpers on the back for a long time, I wondered if PlayStation would bring that to the mainstream market, but it hasn't happened. Maybe it's an attachment like we got for the PlayStation 4 at some point in the future. These triggers, haptic triggers. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to feel the full effect of these whilst I'm just sat here without it being plugged into a game, but these can have tension adjustments. So if you're pulling back on a bow, this can get harder and harder to pull back. If you're accelerating, whatever game you're playing, the tension and the haptics within these buttons can be altered. It feels really good. And there's a nice feel between both the L1 R1 and L2 R2. You're going to see the new USB-C port there to connect to your console. The thumbsticks rotate really smoothly, which is great to feel. And as somebody that is a PlayStation 4 controller user, this doesn't feel too dissimilar. If anything, a little bit comfier. Getting my finger over to those buttons is not as easy. Touching the touchpad, that's fine. Any claw players out there, maybe a little bit more difficult. Now, I can show you guys a little bit of PlayStation 5 gameplay. This is from Astro's Playroom within the Cooling Springs stage, and it's a really awesome game built into the PlayStation. And it's a really cool game that comes with the PlayStation 5 that allows you to explore and really get used to all the features the DualSense PlayStation 5 controller can offer. I am playing it a lot more over the next few days. So look out for more videos, but this is a little bit of a preview as to how it looks. So, time for the big comparison. The console versus the old consoles and the controller versus the older controllers. I've gone ahead and got the PlayStation 5 and grabbed as many consoles as I could as quickly as possible, including the PlayStation 4 Pro and many of the Xboxes. As you can see, the PlayStation 5 is considerably bigger in all factors compared to the PlayStation 4 Pro. We've also got the Xbox One X, the bigger and older counterpart Xbox One, and then just for the sake of comparison, the Xbox 360 and even a Nintendo Switch Lite. It's safe to say this thing is big and it is wide and it is larger than the other consoles, but with the amount of stuff that's packed inside it. I know PlayStation strips away the, the console to show everything that's inside of it. And I mean, it's packing a lot of tech. That's why it is a next-gen console. Let me know what you guys think, though. Is it too big or not? I do a lot of gaming on monitors, but also larger gaming TVs as well. So for comparison's sake, I went ahead and put the PlayStation 5 next to my 65-inch LG TV just to see how it looks in a living room situation on a standard TV. And... It still looks pretty big, can't lie, still looks pretty big. But of course, let's not forget that the PlayStation 5 has the ability to be vertical or horizontal. And having set it up for a little bit, I actually feel more safe with it being flat, with it being horizontal. I just feel like it's not gonna fall over and, and break or anything. And I'm sure a lot of people will have different preferences to how they want their PlayStation 5 to sit. But yeah, it, it's definitely big. As for the controller, I'm sure people have preferences as to which controllers they prefer. I personally play with a PlayStation 4 controller controller and I knew a lot of people have said the PlayStation 5 controller looks a lot bigger. Now something that I want to make really clear is that if you go ahead and actually put the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5 controller together, the buttons are still in the same place. What's changed is like the outer edges of the controller itself. So it's a little bit bigger under the thumbsticks, which doesn't really mean anything. It's a little bit wider at the sides, a little bit longer at the bottom. And as a result, it feels like a slightly bigger controller, but all of the buttons we used to the PlayStation 4 will feel exactly the 
same. It's more similar in size to the Xbox controller. And I just put a Nintendo Switch Pro controller in there for comparison as well. But the good news is if you like the PS4 controller, you'll like this controller. And if you like the Xbox controller, you're more likely to like the PlayStation 5 controller because it does feel a little bit bigger. Now, as for direct comparisons against the PlayStation 5 and the new Xbox Series X and S, I unfortunately cannot compare both of them within this video for reasons that I cannot say. All that I will say is that if you want to see more on the Xbox Series X, the next gen Xbox console, make sure you've hit that subscribe button because I may or may not have another early next gen console coming very soon. Just saying. Now, from the moment this console has arrived in my house to this moment right here, all I've done is started working on this video and talk about it on social media. So I need to take some time away to actually boot up the console and to experience the PlayStation 5. I can unfortunately not show that in this video, but if you want to see more of the PlayStation 5 in action, as I said, hit that subscribe button button and stay tuned. A big thank you to everyone that's picked up anything in the brand new Allier.shop merch release. I really, really appreciate it. And if you want to see more videos, they're on screen here to keep on watching. Stay tuned for even more next-gen console awesomeness. And I really hope you've enjoyed the PlayStation 5 first look and unboxing.